The seventh Sunday after Pentecost, year B, from Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all who dwell therein. In the name of that Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our readings for this week feature quite a bit of dancing. Both David and Salome's dancing, and the consequences of that dancing, remind us that it's never just about the dance itself, but also about all sorts of other things, like sex and shame and politics, not to mention the difficulty and danger of discerning the will of God. The letter to the Ephesians speaks of this difficulty and danger and discernment describing God as having chosen us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, and also as having a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. There are many different ways of understanding this plan, and because the letter to the Ephesians contains all sorts of behavioral instruction, one way is to think of the faithful as little more than an obedient kick line, costumed and cosmetic and choreographed into a display of predetermined order. What we learn from scripture, however, is that the same act is sometimes good and sometimes not. Nakedness, sometimes good, sometimes not. Oath keeping, sometimes good, sometimes not. Tending to the Ark of the Covenant and offering sacrifices, sometimes good and sometimes not. What scriptures demonstrates for us is that God teaches us some basic steps and admonishes us not to twist our ankles by stepping in some obvious holes. And then God whirls us up into a dance that incorporates the whole world and all who dwell therein. It isn't that some are invited to dance while others are left lining the walls. Everyone and everything, making gazillions of free choices, some of them wise and some of them amazingly boneheaded. And yet all intersecting one another in mind-blowing glorious complexity. Together, all of this manifests the good pleasure of God's will by participating wholeheartedly in our share of those choices, trusting that the power of redemption is strong enough to save us from disaster when we inevitably make a wrong move and by abandoning the garments of shame and fear, we too may live for the praise of God's glory. The riches of the grace that God has lavished upon us in the birth, life, death, and resurrection of the beloved sing to us a music of redemption, strong enough and sweet enough to sweep everything up into its saving embrace. Let us rejoice in our part of the dance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.